Hello everyone and welcome back to another Starfield console mod video for Xbox. This is part 9 of the series where I'm going over the best new mods for the game. I think this might be the last video for a little while for two reasons. One, I really struggled to put together a decent selection of mods for this video. The amount of mods releasing has slowed down a bit. And also the variety of mods releasing is a lot less. As I make more videos, I don't really want to go over mods that do the exact same as ones I've previously covered. Second, Elden Ring DLC is out soon and I'll be switching to that later in the week. But that gives the mods a bit of a time to build back up and I'll be covering them again after Elden Ring's done, so probably sometime next week. So if you're a new subscriber here for Starfield, I'll be covering the game again, don't worry. Let's take a look then at 10 more mods for Starfield and we're starting with the Halo Spartan Armor Collection. This mod adds different armor cores and attachments to the game. They come in five color variants, default, red, blue, yellow, classic. They're craftable at the industrial workbench and there are literally hundreds of different parts for you to craft. The armors are split into the following parts to mix and match custom armors. So there's base, includes chest, armor, undersuit, neck, belt and tights. But there's also 22 different parts including legs, arms, shoulders, torso and everything else to fully customize your Halo armor as much as you possibly can. As for defensive ratings and stuff like that, I wish some of these mods would make them more useful such as a legendary instead of just a basic armor. But overall a fun mod nonetheless. Nadaba, this is a new pet companion who is always with you. She changes her skin depending on the environment she finds to increase her chances of camouflaging as much as a huge creature can and you just have to go inside the constellation lodge to find her. And to be honest she's much more of an exciting companion than the regular ones you get in game. She's just a huge space dog. She'll simply follow you around everywhere you go and attack enemies as any companion would. All starborn powers at max level and no starborn power cost. If you're not excited about the prospect of visiting 240 temples to achieve maximum level for all starborn powers, are you roleplaying a starborn overlord and your limited powers are cramming your style, then this is the mod for you. In a corner in the room of the lodge between the chair and the potted plant, you'll find a mysterious standing button. Press this button and it will increase your level for all starborn powers by 1, activate it 10 times and it will increase your power to a maximum of 10. And of course any powers already learned will be ignored, so you can press the button as many times as you like until all powers are maxed. To go with this mod I've also included no starborn power cost. All starborn powers will cost zero to cast, including any that are ever added by Bethesda or mod authors in the future. So I really like this mod, all starborn powers should have been available early in the game, at least the level one of them. I didn't replay really the main story as I focused on entirely side content and played like 300 hours of my main playthrough and in all that time I actually only locked one starborn powers so I found this a good mod to download. Neon Entertainer Outfit, this mod changes the funny entertainment outfits in the club in Neon into something that looks a lot better. The outfits were hilarious but a bit too out there and they didn't really match the look of the game. With the mod of course you can also equip this outfit if you have the Neon Entertainment outfit available in your playthrough. Matalija Aerospace, this mod adds a brand new shipbuilder into Starfield. There are a few mods that have done this already but this is the best one I've seen so far in terms of quality matching the game. This mod aims to be the premier ship manufacturer in the cell systems and they've provided advanced weaponry, shields, reactor halves, staircases, battle stations, cockpits, engines and a lot more. They are also working on improving the existing portfolio of equipment on offer as well as developing new equipment to ensure customers have the safest, most comfortable and convenient space fearing ventures both in and outside the cell systems. So a very decent mod, adds in a whole bunch of new stuff for you to build in the shipbuilder menu or you can add to your existing spaceship with new parts. Starfield Hair and Beards adds new standalone hairstyles for both male and females to the game. The mod is two mods in one and adds in new beards for men as well as the hairstyles. It's the first real hair mod we've seen on console and it looks really decent. In total there are over 50 different hairstyles and beards to choose from. Most are available in both male and female characters and they look way better than anything you'd find in the vanilla creation menu. Make Rosie a real doctor. Rosie Tannehill is an optional companion available at the bar at the entrance to Aquila City. She's a doctor, the only hireable one in game and she wants to join your crew and see the galaxy. The problem is she has no real skills that benefit the ship's operations and doesn't have any doctor dialogue either. So she's really not much use on your ship but that is fixed with this mod. This adds Rosie Tannehill to two factions required for her to have doctor dialogue options and also to Charlie Finn's vendor faction so she can buy and sell medical supplies. The new dialogue option isn't voiced but otherwise works correctly and she won't take up a crew slot because she has the leadership perk. 
and she will now be dressed in a physician's uniform when you first meet Thank her. You. If you have already met Rosie in game, she won't have any of her dialogue options, so just set her as your active companion you and then dismiss her and the mod you. should work. A small mod, but a decent one because every ship really should have a doctor on board, Thanks. and now you can with Rosie Tannehill. Ascension Gameplay Overhaul. This is a mod that affects gameplay, alters weapons, armors, enemy scaling, leveling and perks for a consistent, challenging and fair experience. Major changes include the removal of level scaling, with the game world remaining constant regardless of the player's level, weapons deal consistent damage, armors always matter, and enemies don't scale with the player. Instead of becoming more powerful, players become more skilled, keeping combat engaging throughout. For example then, health stays at the base of 100, making combat consistently a challenge. Leveling requires a consistent 500 XP initially, and increasing by 10 per level. Weapons are rebalanced for consistent damage, with quality tiers and fire modes removed. Most weapons are stronger, with headshots often fatal, and that applies to both the player and enemy NPCs. Enemies spawn at all levels, with a level 100 enemy only twice as powerful as a level 1. Difficulty depends on weapons and armors. Perks are revamped with damage increasing perks removed, players start with essential abilities, armor penetration is halved, ballistic perks allow fire modes modification, boost packs, combat slide and stealth meter are now available from the start. Ship encounters are not level limited, allowing high tier ships early in the game and upgrading your ship makes combat easier. Resources and cost for various items are altered, vendor credits are increased, mines explode faster and phase time is halved, limb shots do half damage, buffs and debuffs are reduced by 10%. Overall this is definitely the best gameplay overhaul for the game so far and that was just a recap of what the mod actually does. It covers a lot more in a lot more detail than I can go over in this video so check it out for yourself if you're looking for a more realistic gameplay in Starfield. We have a couple of player home overhauls with Aquila Stretch Home Overhaul and Neon Sky Suite furnished and expanded. The first mod overhauls the stretch apartment, furnishing it and adding everything you could need from name storage to workbenches and displays. It includes compact and cool looking custom workbenches for research, weapons, spacesuit cooking, camps and industrial, beautiful decoration and immersive clutter, displays and mannequins, glorious static clutter, custom name storage, actual usable containers instead of static ones, a bookcase actually functions as a bookcase, fridge has food in it and dresser actually store things. All storage is marked safe from respawning and has no weight limit and you should be able to store as many spacesuits and coffee mugs in your house as you want without carry weight restrictions. Bed will give you well rested as well and the whole thing's nav meshed and littered with markers for your friends to use while visiting the place. The Neon Sky Suite is by far the worst apartment in the game at a cost of 230,000 credits and you would be crazy to buy it. In fact, I remember making a video last year showcasing the apartment exactly so players could avoid wasting their credits on it. But with this mod, it's looking a lot more worth the money. Although if you don't want to spend the money, for some reason, if you fly up the balcony, the front door is actually open. So you might be able to get this for free. But either way, it's fully decorated to look amazing. All the rooms are fully furnished and the mod even expands the apartment in areas so you have more space. In fact, I think it's over twice as big as it was before, with a new entire section with bedroom, crafting table, room, armory and bathroom, and overall it's just a much better apartment. Both mods make the apartments look really good, and if you're like me, I can't really be bothered to decorate any of them, so these are some really good player home mods. Glacializer Weapon Mod. This mod adds a glacier themed weapon to the game. It fires and freezing wind to kill your foes in close range. The weapon is considered legendary because it has three legendary effects. Anti-Personnel which does 10% damage against humans. Staggering has a small chance to stagger enemies and Concussive has a small chance to knock down targets. A fun weapon to use especially in close combat as you can simply enter into a room and fire your gun and freeze the entire place killing everyone so definitely a fun little mod to use. Star Wars Armor Pack. I've tried to cover this mod before but it was broken however it's finally been updated and I will showcase it for you. The mod is also an important one as it's the base mod for other Star Wars armor mods so it's good that it's now fully working. The mod adds to the game a bunch of Star Wars armors including 11 different armor sets for you to craft at the industrial workbench for one credit. The armor includes Din Djarin aka the Mandalorian, 
Bo-Katan, if you've watched The Mandalorian, you'll know who that is. Jango Fett, who first appeared in Attack of the Clones. Death Watch, which are like Mandalorian, but they're kind of a splinter group and they have their own armor. Shadow Collective is a criminal alliance founded during the Clone Wars by Darth Maul. They also have their own armor set. And we have a bunch of clone trooper armors, five different divisions, including base, 501, 212, 41, and guard, along with the clone commandos armor as well. All armors include both the spacesuit version and clothing version. The clothing option in crafting will display as a fabric bag and include the word clothing so you know which one you're crafting. The armors are not super high in terms of damage reduction, but you can still upgrade them at the workbench if you want to. And guys, that is pretty much it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe to see more Starfield content and other games as well. Like I said, I'll be back with more next week. This week is going to be all about Elden Ring. Leave a comment about your favourite mods and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.